Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming, tech, emulation, and open source news, and sometimes reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at the System76 Starter Pro laptop. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, System76 loaned me the Starter Pro for a fair and honest review. I have to send it back after I'm done reviewing it. And this is the box it was sent in. It's a very basic box. Here's a quick peek inside and you can see the laptop is very well protected from damage while shipping. And I can see there's also a USB stick. Additionally, we've got a power brick with a barrel adapter. And if you wanted to read the specs of this power brick, feel free to pause the video. There's also a welcome envelope with some stickers in it and some other stuff. I like this small personal touch of including a thank you note with a whole bunch of contact information. The laptop itself is wrapped up very well with foam and plastic to prevent damage. As for the specs of the Darter Pro they sent me, this is the 14-inch Darter Pro with an Intel i7-155H CPU as well as integrated graphics. It has 32 gigs of RAM, it has 500 gigs of storage. Now since this is the 14-inch version, there is no numpad on the keyboard, and as soon as I can get the camera to focus here, I can show off the ports on the right-hand side. So there are two Type-C ports. One is a Thunderbolt port. There's a Type-A port, as well as the, I think it's 90-watt power port. And on the left-hand side here, we've got the microSD card slot, another USB Type-A port, as well as the headphone jack. Now the screen on the Darter Pro is 16 by 10 with a resolution of 1900 by 1200 pixels. It is a matte finish and it's a non-touch screen. The back of the Darter Pro has a full-size HDMI out as well as an ethernet jack and the exhaust port for the fans. The bottom of this thing is pretty simple. There's four rubber feet with the back two being raised to help keep this thing raised and improve the airflow. On the front, there's a couple of LEDs to let you know if it's powered on and also for the battery. It's got a nice metal case. It does not feel cheap and System76 is printed on the top of the case. The hinges feel good and they don't feel like they'd wear out over time. Overall, I'm impressed with the build of the System76 Darter Pro. It does not feel cheap. And thanks to the build on the 14 inch size, I've got no issues throwing this into a backpack and not really worrying about it. Now I've had the opportunity to test out the Darter Pro for about a month. It's been the primary laptop on this channel in that time and I've made a ton of YouTube videos for this channel using this laptop. I've been very impressed with the battery life, even taking it camping. Now I can confidently say that this is not necessarily a power hungry laptop. I mean, when I was camping, I had this plugged into a portable battery with the USB-C port and it was drawing between 34 to 36 watts and charging the laptop while I was using it. And I mean, for reference here, I have a secondary laptop. It's my normal main laptop. It's an Alienware X14, and there is no chance I can actually use that laptop and charge it at the same time with 34 to 36 watts. Now for reference here, I've got the Darter Pro 14 on the left-hand side and my Alienware X14 on the right-hand side. The Alienware has an Intel i7-12700H CPU and an NVIDIA 3060 GPU. With the GPU turned off and using the Intel CPU only, it's got about 6 hours of battery life. The Darter Pro, on the other hand, has 14 hours of battery life on idle. Absolutely crazy. Now mind you, that was just at idle, so let's push these systems and see what happens. I'm rendering a video and recording a video at the exact same time. The Darter Pro's battery life drops to about 4 hours overall, which is respectable given everything that it's doing, and the Alienware is just over 2 hours, which is half the Darter Pro. And not that it really matters, but just for fun here, here's the size difference between the Alienware X14 and the System76 Darter Pro. Again, two different kinds of laptops, but they're both deemed to be ultra portable. And we can see at the back here, the Darter Pro sits ever so slightly higher. It's very similar in size to the X14, which is already very thin. And here's a look from the front just to give you an idea of the overall profile of this thing and it is very thin. So here's what the built-in webcam looks like in an outdoor environment. I've got absolute default settings here. I've changed absolutely nothing. And this is the built-in microphone. Again, I am outdoor, so there may be some interference in terms of sounds. Here's another look at the webcam and how lighting kind of affects the quality of the picture. Half of me is in the sun, half of me is out of the sun. So this half here is in the sun and you can tell everything is kind of blown out. The side that's not in the sun is getting a lot nicer picture. And I think it goes without saying the built-in audio I find absolutely atrocious. I don't know if something's wrong with this thing, but the built-in mic is not good at all. 
For a direct comparison, here's the audio from my Rode VideoMic Go 2, which is a portable microphone, and I would argue the audio quality is night and day. Now, it's worth pointing out that the Darter Pro is not necessarily a gaming powerhouse. When it's asked to do a whole bunch of things at the same time, the frame rate can struggle a little bit. Now, if you're not multitasking, I find that the Darter Pro performs fine with not necessarily AAA games, but lighter games in general, for example, indie games. I've got graphics cranked here on Rocket League, and it's running at a stable 60 frames per second. Now for emulation, depending on the game, it'll do okay. For example, here's Ultra Street Fighter 2 in Ryujinx, and I'm getting a stable 60 frames per second. However, with a more demanding game like Breath of the Wild or Tears of the Kingdom, the frame rates did suffer quite a bit. I was getting less than 10 frames per second. To be honest with you, if you're interested in benchmarks, I'll drop a link to this Pharonix article in the description below, and I do recommend checking it out. They benchmark the heck out of this i7-155H CPU. So let's go over what I liked, what I didn't like, who I think the Darter Pro is for, and whether or not I'd recommend one. And we'll start out here with what I liked. I like the size and the form factor of this. I think 14 inch is a perfect form factor for everything that this thing can do. I like the fact that the USB-C port can be used to power it as opposed to being married to just the barrel jack. On top of that, I like the touchpad on this. It's large, there's a lot of space here, it's very sensitive, and I find it works very well. I was very impressed with the battery life. It did not get too loud. The fans on this one were a lot more quiet than my Alienware X14, which is also a very thin laptop. Given the fact that this thing is small and thin, I expected the fans to be loud, but they're a lot quieter than I was expecting. I like the glare-resistant display, especially using this outside while I was camping, and I like the fact that they support the right to repair. Opening this thing up and exchanging parts shouldn't be too much of a hassle. And the last thing I like here, and in my opinion, this one's a huge one. This system is purpose-built for Linux. You're not going to run into any hardware compatibility issues, especially if you're using Pop! OS. If you're not using Pop! OS, you can just swap with a different distro and it's not a big deal. And if you wanted to run Windows on it, you absolutely can. Now shifting to my dislikes, and I've got about two and a half of them, so the half here is not necessarily a full dislike because you can power this via USB-C, but I wish it did not have a barrel jack on it. I mean, we're in 2024 here, this is a low power CPU, we should be able to get away with just having a USB-C jack to power this thing. The second dislike here is the internal microphone. I just found it to be very hot per se. It was very loud, it was clipping all over the place, and I would say it's not necessarily usable. And the third dislike were the speakers on them. I did not find the speakers on this device very good at all. However, in fairness, everybody hears things differently, but I just found the speakers to be thin, hollow, and quiet. And they paled in comparison with something like my Alienware X14, although the X14 is basically double the price. Now moving on to who I think the Darter Pro is for. If you're on the more heavy-duty side of things, for example, AAA gaming with cranked up graphics, this is probably not for you. You're going to want something with a dedicated or discrete GPU. If you're into video editing and heavy video editing, this again may not necessarily be for you. If you're into heavy computing with a lot of demand on your processor, this again may not necessarily be for you. However, if you need something to kind of do a little bit of everything, if you need something to be dependable while you're on the road and not plugged in, if you're looking for something to be kind of a jack of all trades and master of none, this Darter Pro may be for you. I mean, if you're looking at a laptop to be used as a laptop, to be portable, to be not plugged in in certain situations, then the Darter Pro may be right up your alley. It doesn't consume a lot of power. The battery life I find is respectable. And it does do a little bit of everything. You can play some light games on it. You can video edit and record. I mean, it's powered my YouTube channel for the last month. So would I recommend the Darter Pro 14? And my answer here is absolutely yes. And I'd recommend springing for the i7-155H CPU in it over the i5. The overall price of the computer I tested out, provided I built it correctly on their website, is about $1,427. I mean, if you need something to be dependable, repairable, not necessarily plugged in all the time, and something that can be used as a laptop and can do a whole bunch of different stuff, the Darter Pro may exactly be up your alley, or at least something to consider. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to System76 for sending me this Darter Pro just to test out for the month. I've been very impressed with it. Let me know your thoughts about the Darter Pro in the comments below. Would you consider a laptop like this? Would you consider a Linux purpose-built laptop? 
And what kind of stuff are you looking for in a laptop? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate. Save your state.